Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. By request in this video, I will be featuring the MiG-15 BIS Tier 10 Soviet fighter. This aircraft features two 23mm cannons, which do 170 damage per second with a rate of fire of 480 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 800 meters. It also has a 37 millimeter cannon that does 320 damage per second with a rate of fire of 180 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 640 meters. Now I have gotten this aircraft to specialist level and in terms of equipment we have for the cockpit a choice between cockpit armor which increases the crew's resistance to injuries but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability or we can go with the sight which increases firing accuracy at the risk of greater possible pilot injury. Now I don't want to do anything that is going to decrease this aircraft's maneuverability because I do think even though this aircraft is very much a zoom and boom fighter it is still critically important for it to have good maneuverability so I did go with the sight option and the sight increases accuracy of forward firing weapons by 5% but has a 3% but has a 3% decrease in the pilot's resistance to injuries. So it's obviously, you know, a trade-off there. And we'll talk about how, you know, I tried to ameliorate that problem. Uh, for the airframe, we had a choice between reinforced skin, which increases the wings and tails resistance to critical damage, but at the cost of aircraft speed. Reinforced airframe, which increases the aircraft's hit points, but decreases maneuverability. Lightweight wing frame, which increases the aircraft's maneuverability, but at the cost of aircraft hit points. And finally, polished skin, which increases the aircraft speed, but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. Again, I'm not going to do anything here that is going to decrease this aircraft's maneuverability. Uh, therefore, I did go with lightweight wing frame. And lightweight wing frame increases the aircraft's roll maneuverability by 5% and its maneuverability in turns by 1%. Of course, the downside is a minus 1% in aircraft hit points and minus 3% in wings resistance to critical damage. For the engine, we had a choice between combined injection boost, which increases boost efficiency at the cost of boost availability, lightweight power unit, which increases the aircraft's maneuverability at the cost of the engine's resistance to damage, and finally, uprated engine, which increases engine thrust, but at the cost of the aircraft's resistance to fire. I did go with the lightweight power unit. Uh, because I did want the increased maneuverability for this aircraft. And again, you know, I know that some of you may have a different opinion on this. Obviously, this being a kind of zoom and boom aircraft, uh, you could choose to go with engine thrust. But I just would rather have the increased maneuverability because I value that based on my play style, my personal play style. But if you went with uprated engine, I think that would be a perfectly good alternative. In terms of the lightweight power unit, it increases the aircraft's yaw maneuverability, which, you know, I really don't use yaw, so that doesn't help, but it increases it by 2%, but it does increase maneuverability in turns by 1% at the cost of the aircraft's engine's resistance to critical damage of 3%. Because this is a specialist aircraft, we also have another option and our choices for this second option for the engine is engine armor protection, which increases the engine's resistance to damage at the cost of speed. 
combined injection boost system, which increases boost efficiency but decreases its availability, an uprated engine, which increases engine thrust but increases the chance that the aircraft could be set on fire. I ultimately went with uh, engine armor protection because, you know, when we went with the first skill, uh, it did in decrease the engine's resistance to damage. So I felt that this might offset that. And specifically, we went with the stock on this aircraft, which increases the engine's resistance to critical damage by 10% at the loss of only 1% on the maximum speed and boost activated. Finally, in the forward firing weapon, we had a choice between reinforced bolt carriers, which increases burst length at the cost of accuracy. I did not want to lose, I don't like losing accuracy with the uh, armaments, so I didn't choose that. Long gun barrels, which increases the range of fire at the cost of burst length. And then finally, gas-operated action, which increases rate of fire, but decreases firing accuracy. Again, I did not want to go with a decrease in firing accuracy, so I did go with long gun barrels because I do like having that extra range. Being able to shoot first is a definite advantage in a fighter. For consumables, I went with emergency medical kit. Uh, since we do have a slightly increased chance of our pilot being injured because of our cockpit choice, that helps to ameliorate that concern. For the airframe, I went with secondary control system, which in restores controllability of wings and tail. And for the engine, I went with emergency engine restart, since we do have some increase in engine vulnerability. Make sure if we, our engine does get knocked out that we can get that back up in working order. And antioxidizing additive, which, is in, which increases engine thrust by 5%, and that's effective for the course of the battle. For ammunition, I went with universal ammunition, which increases the chance of causing fire and inflicting critical damage. All right, so in terms of pilot skills, I went with Engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%. So that helps us in our acceleration, uh, get out of town if we need to quickly. For maneuverability, I went with Aerodynamics Expert, which increases the positive effect of the mounted equipment on aircraft maneuverability and speed by 40%. So all those choices we made with equipment to increase this aircraft's maneuverability, those choices are going to be aided by aerodynamics experts. So good synergy between our pilot skills and our chosen equipment. Uh, aerobatics expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. There again, increasing the aircraft's maneuverability. So I had two other skill points and I put one of those into fire resistance. We did make some choices that increase this aircraft's vulnerability to fire so that's to help uh, improve that problem. And then my final skill point I put into Eagle Eyed mainly just because I didn't have anywhere else to put it uh, which increases range at which enemy aircraft are detected by 10%. So I think these pilot skills work very well with this aircraft. And hopefully you'll see that when we have combat later. All right, so let's take a look at paint schemes for this aircraft. Because we have got to be looking good when we're flying. This is summer. This is winter. Desert. And marine. Sharp looking aircraft.
So the LA-15 features three 23mm cannons, which do 170 damage per second each, with a rate of fire of 480 and an effective firing range of 800. I do have this aircraft to specialist level. As with the MiG, we went with the sight, the stock lightweight wing frame, we did go with stock reinforced skin, which increases tail's resistance to critical damage and the wing's resistance to critical damage. As with the MiG, we went with the lightweight power unit. And we went with the uprated engine, which increases engine thrust. For consumables, we went with emergency medical kit, secondary control system, a nerding system, which reduces the chance of fire by 30%. That works throughout the battle. Emergency engine restart system and universal ammunition, which increases chance of fire and critical damage. We have the same pilot skills as with the MiG. In terms of paint schemes, you are currently looking at summer. This is winter, desert, and marine. Now I was asked the question, uh, among the tier 10 Soviet fighters, which fighter would I want to go with? And, you know, I really like the Yak-30. However, it is very much a low-altitude fighter. Looking at the stats for the Yak-30, you see its maximum optimal altitude is 1,500 meters. So that's pretty bad. And while I really like the Yak-30, I just did not, I just don't think among the tier 10 Soviet fighters, it's the best because it does have that altitude limitation. You know, I've had situations where an RB-17 was the last aircraft left on the enemy team and I couldn't, I was in a Yak-30 and I couldn't get to it to, to win the match because I just didn't have the altitude uh, capability. So to me, that's, that's kind of a limiting factor for the Yak-30 that kind of takes it out of the running. So that really leaves the LA-15 and the MiG-15 BIS as the, you know, best choices. And I think either one of these aircraft is a good choice. When we look at the altitude performance of the LA-15, the maximum optimum altitude for the LA-15 is 2,000 meters for the MiG-15 IBS, it's 2,800 meters. And certainly 2,800 meters is, you know, much better than just 2,000. But I think still the LA-15 is a good middle ground to choose from. In terms of gun armaments, comparing these two aircraft, the total cumulative damage for the LA-15 is 530 damage per second versus the 686 damage per second of the MiG-15 BIS. In terms of survivability, hit points for the MiG, 495. Same for the LA-15. The LA-15, a little bit more uh, resistance to damage and resistance to fire than the MiG. That could be a function of our choices in equipment, though. In terms of airspeed, the boost duration for the LA-15 is 8 seconds, same for the MiG, so no difference there. Uh, however, the boost speed for the LA-15 is 990 kilometers per hour versus 1,010 kilometers per hour for the MiG. Now, not a huge difference there. Uh, cruising speed 515 kilometers per hour for the LA-15, 618 for the MiG. Max dive speed 1100 for the MiG, 1000 for 
the LA-15. So, you know, pretty comparable, I would say. Where the LA-15 has a advantage over the MiG is in maneuverability. It takes 10.5 seconds for the MiG to turn, average time to turn 360 degrees versus 9.3 seconds for the LA-15. Uh, also, the LA-15 has a 196 degrees per second rate of roll versus the 142 for the MiG. So the LA-15 has a significant uh, maneuverability advantage over the MiG. Also, the MiG's stall speed is 180 kilometers per hour versus the LA-15 is only 160 kilometers per hour. So the LA-15 has the advantage there in stall speed as well. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say between these two aircraft, if you had to choose between them, I would choose the MiG, and I am now going to feature the MiG in combat. So let's head in, see a battle with the MiG, and see how it performs. All right then, so for our MiG, we're gonna be fighting over the Alpine Gamut Collision Theater of Operation. Cover your allies, hit the enemy, and we shall win. I think our best bet here is to head to this garrison here and then from the garrison we will move on to the air base. Just kind of play it by ear and see what the enemy team is doing. And let's see, got a specialist Yacht 30. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. MiG is such a fast aircraft. Now, I always like to target the uh, light aircraft first. because they're they're faster kills took a little bite out of that aircraft here on a friendly. Let's see if we can help out. Might as well shoot at that while we're on our way. Couple of Germans. fighter over here. Let's see if we can catch up to it. ME 262. Yeah, we've got our specialist aircraft coming in here. It's our Yak 30 boy. It's uh, pretty high here. Kind of out of its element there. And like I said, you know, that's one of the reasons why I, you know, would not choose the Yacht 30 among these aircraft. It's just, it just doesn't have that flexibility to get up there with the altitude boards. Nothing beats it at low altitude. Well, we 
we're gonna get to be careful of this aircraft because it definitely has the maneuverability advantage over us. Is that a, uh, what is that? Spitfire that was so near us? Got a specialist aircraft here again. A Yawk 30? It's really up. Not sure why he's flying so high. Definitely out of his element. MIG here. Battle of the MIGs. Come on. Burn! Burn! There we go. You know, let's just climb. What do we have behind us here? That. Oh, a Swift. I don't know. I think the Swift. I think it can, may be able to outmaneuver us here. I'm not sure. To be honest with you. Not outmaneuvering us so far. Is he giving up? That might be a mistake. He should have stuck with me. Looks like the team is doing well so far. Let's see what do we have here. F-84F. Well, that took a chunk out of him. That 37 millimeter really takes a chunk out of things. That Yawk 30. I think we're more in his bailout right now, so we better kill him faster. It's going to be bad news for us. There we go. Yeah, did not want to get in a turning dogfight with him at a lower altitude. That would not go well for the big boys. Let's take this Keep it up. 262 Victory out, hopefully, cars. here. We cannot support you any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. Great there we go. Today. We'll be waiting for you back home. All right, so number one spot on the team. Two chevrons on the grade rank. Subjugator and effective fire, and of course, victory! Yay! All right, so we'll head back to the hangar and check out the after action report. Okay, so 126,252 in currency, uh, almost 11,000 in experience points, 540 in free experience points. Picked up another. Uh, metal there, flying start, and actually it looks like we got upgraded to three chevrons on the grade rank, so that was nice. And let's see, personal score wise, 11 aircraft destroyed, three sectors captured, 11,670 in combat points, 
and the opposite number one was a yak 30 interesting so there you have it folks the mig 15 bis pretty awesome aircraft love the guns love the airspeed very fast and reasonably maneuverable considering how fast it is and its altitude its high altitude performance if you get an opportunity to fly the mig 15 bis and especially if you can get it to uh, its specialty level i hope you have great success in it So we will be testing out the LA-15 Specialist Fighter here over the Road to Rome Trap Theater of Operation. We will head first to the command center here and get that secured. Get our bombers headed to the enemy's capture points. You are approaching the area of combat operations. Be ready. And then from there, I suspect we'll head to this garrison down here. And if we're still alive and kicking, head for their command center. That's pretty optimistic, <laughs> though. Really like the looks of the LA-15. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. Alright, so we're going to target the light aircraft first here. Seems like a good one to start with. Good maneuverability with the LA-15. It's not Yak-30 maneuverability, but it, still it's pretty good. under that aircraft there. I'm trying to take this guy out before that enemy aircraft gets to us. And we'll switch targets. Now with these BVPs, you want to be really careful. You don't want to go head to head with those fellows because they do have rockets. So we'll just outmaneuver it, get behind it, and take it out. Fire out. There we go. And yeah, we've got a MIG here. Be fun. These aircraft are very similar in terms of speed. The MiG is a little faster. The LA is going to outmaneuver the MiG. And that's huge. Alright, what do we have up here? We have a Yawk. We're kind of down in that Yawk's territory. Like we took a chunk out of it there. Yak is certainly more maneuverable than we are. Unless, of course, he's dealing with some damage. We have here a Javelin. Very fast British heavy fighter. This 
that. German. I think we've got the maneuverability advantage here over this German. He's got more altitude and maybe a little bit more speed, I'm guessing. We have him on maneuverability. Alright, so far, team is doing pretty good here. What's going on over at our command center? A big here. Let's see if we can help finish him off. Teammates are doing a number on him. Get this javelin again. Assuming it's the same one. Faster aircraft than us, certainly. helpful if he turned towards us. Otherwise we're not going to catch him. He's dead. What is chewing on us here? Something is chewing on us. Oh, that BVP. That aircraft does have a rear gunner, and it chewed on us pretty good last time. We don't—I don't know that we have the health to get chewed on a bunch this time. And he tried to roll on us. It'd be nice if we could take out the gunner. Yeah, boy, he that rear gunner. He must have it spec pretty well because it definitely took a bite out of us. We did prevail once again. Yak 30. He's a little out of his terror, a little out of his uh, optimum altitude there. You know, if you're going to fly the Yak 30, you know, stay down at altitude, low altitude, because they're just sitting ducks up here at 2,700 meters. Receiving a Don't think we want to go head to head with this Swift, but what the hell? Let's do it anyway. Do you read me? Over. Pretty sure the Swift is a little faster than we are. gonna have to come back to us. I don't think we can reach them. Sometimes even though they appear to be out of range. Come back. Oh no. The command centers are ours. Awaiting help from the front headquarters. Whew. You know, it's good we got shot down when we did, honestly, because the squaw line was coming through, and another second, and we wouldn't have, uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be reviving. Team is doing quite well here. Let's head over here and see if we can't wrestle away this garrison. Fire definitely can outmaneuver us. Taking some flack here. We 
have their Hornet. Let's head down and finish this. Don't let them gain a foothold. to go. Victory is close. Oh. Do we have a fire on him? That should do it. Oh boy, he's still alive. There we go. I did it. What do we have down here? MIG? And what's that? MIG and Yak working on our ground attack aircraft there. Okay, so at this point we just need to get out of here and live, and then we win. If I die, all our hopes die also. Whew. That was close. <laughs> we are the final hope. <laughs> Alright, so number one spot on the team, flying warrior badge, effective fire, three chevrons on the grade rank, and the key to victory. Look at that, folks. Wow. That was close. Let's head back to the hangar. Got the after action report. Okay, looks like we picked up uh, flying start as well. 126,036 in currency. Wow, over 15,000 in experience points. 755 in free experience points. And yeah, when I heard that you are the final hope, I didn't realize our team had <laughs> been whittled down so far. Um, I just, let's get out of Dodge, let's get out of this combat and just live. And it's a good thing we did. Uh, all right, so 13 kills, three, uh, two assists, captured two sectors, almost 12,000 in combat points. Yawk 30 on the uh, enemy team was the number one for the enemy. All right, folks, so that is the LA-15. A nail biter. But you can see the versatility of this aircraft. It, it certainly is a very viable option as compared to the MiG-15 BIS. I will leave it to your good decision making as to which of those two aircraft you might want to choose as your go-to tier 10 Soviet fighter. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you get an opportunity to fly the LA-15 or the MiG-15 as specialist aircraft even, I hope you have great success.